nuclear fusion is a source of energy. It's cheap, clean, safe. So easy access to fuel and virtually unlimited supply, no production of greenhouse gases, little radioactive waste produced allegedly. Mm -hmm. uh, can, can you sort of elaborate why it's cheap, clean, and safe? I'll start with the easiest one, cheap. It, it is not cheap yet because it hasn't been made at a commercial scale. Time right? flies when you're having fun, it, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, not yeah. yet. But, we'll talk about. But actually, we'll, we'll we'll come back to that because it, it, it this is cheaper or, or a more technically correct term that it's economic that it's economically interesting is is really the primary challenge actually a, a fusion at this point. Um, but I think we can get back to that. So what were the other ones you said? Um, so so cheap. We're we yeah. actually when we're talking about cheap, we're thinking like asymptotically. Like if oh. you take it forward. Yeah. Several hundred years, uh, th that's sort of, because of how much availability there is of resources to use. Of the fuel. Yeah, yeah of the fuel. We should separate those two. The fuel will all, the fuel is already cheap. It's basically yeah. free, right? Yeah. And what, what do you mean by basically free? So if, if we were to be using fusion um, fuel sources to power your, and, and it's like, that's all we had was fusion power plants around and we were doing it, the fuel cost per person or something like 10 cents a year. It's like, it's free, okay. This is why it's hard to, in some ways I think, it's hard to understand fusion because people see this and go, oh, if the fuel is free, this means the energy source is free because we're used to energy sources like this. So we, you know, we spend resources and drill to get gas or oil or we chop wood or we make coal, we find coal or these things, all right? So f fusion, th this is what makes fusion, and it's also... Um, it, it's not an intermittent renewable energy source like wind and solar. So it's like, but this is this makes it hard to understand. So if you're saying the fuel is free, why isn't the like why isn't the energy source free? And it's because of the necessary technologies which must be applied to basically recreate the conditions which are in stars, mm -hmm. in the center of stars. In fact, so there's only one natural place in the universe that fusion occur, fusion energy occurs. That's in the center of stars. So that's going to bring a price to it depending on the, the cost and, sorry, the size and complexity of, of the technology that's needed to recreate those things. And we'll talk about yeah. the details of yeah, those we'll get, technologies yeah, yeah, and which yeah. parts might be expensive yeah. today and which parts might be expensive in 200 years. Ex exactly. It will have a revolution in it, I'm, I'm certain of it. Um, so about clean, so clean is, at its heart, what it does is convert, um, it basically converts hydrogen into, it's, 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 it's heavier forms of hydrogen, the one, the most um, predominant one that we use on Earth, and converts it into helium and some other products, but primarily helium is the product that's left behind. So helium, safe, inert, gas, you know. In fact, that's actually what our sun is doing. It's eventually going to extinguish itself because it'll just make so much helium that it doesn't, it doesn't do that. So in that sense, clean because there's no, there's no emissions of, of carbon or pollutants that come directly from the combustion of the fuel itself. And safe. Safe, yeah. We're talking about very high temperatures. Yeah, yeah. So this is also the counterintuitive thing. So you, you, I told you temperatures, which are like 50 million degrees, or it actually tends to be more like about 100 million degrees is really what we aim for. So how can 100 million degrees be safe? And it's safe because it is, this is so much hotter than anything on Earth, where everything on Earth is at around 300 Kelvin, you know, it's around a few tens of degrees Celsius. And what this means is that in order to get a medium to those temperatures, you have to completely isolate it from anything to do with terrestrial environment. It can have no contact, like with anything on Earth, basically. So this means what we, this is the, the technology that I just described, is that it fundamentally what it does is it takes this fuel and uh, it isolates it from any terrestrial conditions so that it has no idea it's on Earth. It's not touching any object that it, that's at room temperature. Including or, the or, walls of the containment. Even the, including the walls of the containment building or con containment device or even air or anything like this. So... So it's that part um, that makes it safe in this, in the, and there's, there's actually another aspect to it, but that, that fundamental part makes it so safe. Um, and in, in the main lines uh, uh, approach to fusion is also that it's very hot, but there's very, very few particles 
in at any time in, in the thing that would be the power plant. And the, actually, the more correct way to do it is you say there's very few particles per unit volume. So in a cubic centimeter and a cubic meter or something like that. So we can do this. So right now we're, although we don't think of air really as a, as, there's atoms floating around us and there's a density because if I wave my hand, I can feel the, the air pushing against my face. Mm -hmm. That means we're in a fluid or a gas, which is around us. That has a particular um, number of atoms per cubic meter. Right, so it's about this actually turns out to be ten to the twenty fifth. So this is one with twenty five zeros behind it mm -hmm. per cubic meter. So we can figure out like cubic like cubic meters about like this. Yeah, the volume of this table, like the whole volume of this table. Mm -hmm. um, okay, very good. So like f fusion, or it's a, f a few of those. So fusion, like the mainstream one of fusion, like what we're working on at MIT, will have a hundred thousand times less particles mm -hmm. per unit volume than that. So this is very interesting because it's extraordinarily hot, 100 million degrees, but it's very tenuous. And what matters from the engineering and safety point of view is the amount of energy which is stored per unit volume, because this tells you about the the scenarios that the, and that's what you worry about because when those kinds of energies are released suddenly, it's like what would be the consequences, right? So the consequences of this are essentially zero. Mm -hmm. Because that's less energy content than boiling water. Because of the low density? Because of the, the low density. So if you take uh, water is at about 100 million to a billion times more dense than this. So even though it's at much lower temperature, it's actually still, it has more energy content. So if for this reason, um, you know, one, one of the ways that I explain this is that if you imagine a power plant that's like powering Cambridge, Massachusetts, like if you were to, which you, you wouldn't do this directly, but if you went like this mm -hmm. on it, it actually extinguishes the fusion because it gets too cold immediately. Yeah. So that's the other one. And, and the other part is that it does not, in the, because it works by staying hot rather than a chain reaction, it can't run out of control. That's the other part of it. So the, by the way, this is what very much distinguishes it from fission. It's not a process that can run away from you because it's it's basically thermally stable. What does thermally stable mean here? That means is that you want to run it at the optimization in temperature such that if it deviates away from that temperature, the reactivity gets lower. And, it, and the reason for this is because it's hard to keep the reactivity going. Like yeah. it's a very hard fire to keep going, basically. Oh, so it doesn't, it doesn't run away from you. It can't run so away the from you. So how difficult is the control there to keep it at that? It varies from, from concept to concept, but in general, it, it's, fairly, it's fairly easy um, yeah, to do that. And the, the easiest thing, it, it, can't, it can't physically run away from you because the other part of it is that there's just, at any given time, there's a very, very small amount of fuel available to fuse it anyway. So this means that that's always intrinsically limited to this. So if it, if you, even if the power consumption of the device goes up, it just kind of burns itself out immediately, yeah. So you are the, just to take a tan another tangent on a tangent, you're the director of MIT's Plasma Science and Fusion Center. That's right. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about, maybe you can mention some interesting aspects of the history uh, of the center in the broader history of uh, MIT and maybe broader history of science and engineering and the history of human civilization, <laughs> but also just the link on the safety aspect. Yeah. You know, um, how how do you prevent you know some, some of the amazing reactors that you're designing? How, how do you prevent from destroying all of human civilization in the process? <laughs> what, what's it's the like, safety protocols? Fusion is um, interesting because it's not really directly weaponizable because. What, what I mean by that is that you have you have to work very hard to make these yes. conditions at which you can get energy gain from from fusion um, and uh, this means that the the when we design these devices with respect to application in the energy field is that they you know you while, while while they will because they're producing large amounts of power and they will have hot things inside of them mm -hmm. this means that they have a, like a level of industrial hazard which is very similar to what like, you would have like in a chemical processing plant or mm -hmm. anything like that and any kind of energy plant actually has these as well too but the underlying under underneath it core technology like can't be directly 
used uh, in, in a nefarious way because of the power that's being emitted. It just basically, well, if you try to do those things, typically it just stops working. So the safety concerns have to do with just regular things that uh, like equipment malfunctioning, uh, melting of equipment, like all, all this kind of stuff that, yeah. is, that has nothing to do with fusion necessarily. Yeah. I mean, usually what we worry about is the viability because in the end we build pretty complex objects to realize these requirements. And so what we try really hard to do is like not damage those components, which, but those are things which are internal to the, to the fusion device. And, and it's, it, this is not something that you would, um, uh, consider about like it would, uh, as you say, destroy human civilization because that release of energy is just inherently limited because of the fusion process. So it doesn't say that there's zero. So you asked about the other feature of it, that it's safe. So it is, the process itself is intrinsically safe, but because it's a complex technology, you still have to take into amount, uh, consideration aspects of the safety. So it produces ionizing radiation instantaneously. So you have to take care of this, which means that you shield it. You think of like your dental x-rays or, or treatments for cancer and things like this. We, we always shield ourselves from this. So we get the beneficial effects, but we minimize the harmful effects of those. So there, there, are, there are those aspects of it as well too.